Welcome to India, home of the butter chicken. If you want to chow down on some delish artery-clogging delicacies, then you've come to the right police. So I was cruising around downtown Delhi doing a little sightseeing action at the India Gate. Now don't get me wrong, overall that was a pretty nice gate, but if I had to be perfectly honest with you, right about now I was feeling kinda hungry. So rather than spending another New Delhi nanosecond at that gate, I figured I should get myself something to eat. So I sprinted on over to a famous New Delhi establishment called Have More. And you best believe as soon as I busted on into that have more, I ordered up a wide array of delectable treats. And the centerpiece of this mighty fine feast was a little thing called butter chicken and I thought it had some serious artery clogging potential. Now at this point I got a level with you, I did order a pretty big feast for myself here but I didn't order it because I wanted to order it. I ordered this mighty fine feast because I actually needed to. I mean, I was so crazed with hunger at this point in my travels that if I didn't jam large quantities of empty calories down my throat, there's no telling what would happen. It was pretty much a matter of survival is what I'm trying to say. Anyway, the first food I had on deck over here was a little thing called masala papad. It's a crunchy roasted flatbread that has fresh vegetables and spices on top and I figured I'd take myself a bite. And wow, that fresh crunchy bite very well may be the perfect appetizer to this incredible feast. That crunchy flatbread was pretty salty so I couldn't eat too many of these things, just enough to jack up that sodium level a tad. After all, I do have to replenish some electrolytes after sweating like a mad bull in that deli sun. Now, nibbling away at this meal was all fine and good, but I didn't want to take a damn year to eat the whole thing, so I just decided to grab a huge ass piece of that papad. That's right, baby, no more pussyfooting around for me. I'm getting serious about life over here. They say you should grab life by the horns, but I think they should say grab life by the dick because right about now I'm making all kinds of progress with this papad. Anyway, the main point I'm trying to get across over here is I actually like this masala papad. It has a light, almost healthy flavor to it and it tastes like a cross between Indian food and Mexican food. So after I cleared out that puppy, I moved on to the butter chicken. Now this may well be one of the most popular Indian dishes worldwide and you can probably get it in any Indian restaurant outside of India. I also got myself a choice quality selection of Indian flatbreads and I figured I'd try out this Murchi Paratha first. It's a green chili infused flatbread and I think it's looking pretty decent. And now it's the moment we've all been waiting for, it's time for that butter chicken. Now, sometimes when I really want a food item, I wait as long as possible to get it. Must be some kind of delayed gratification thing. The main point is I've had plenty of opportunities to get butter chicken in India. But somehow, some way, I wanted to wait until the moment was perfect to get it. Anyway, as you can see, I'm carefully and cautiously loading up that Murchi Paratha with some nice butter chicken. Then after topping off that mofo, I folded it up and it was looking pretty nice, so I raised it to get a better look. And man, oh man, look at that beautiful bite. It's looking so swadished that I almost don't want to eat it, but I pretty much had to. So I savagely took myself a bite and oh my moogly. Is this the real life or is it just fantasy because right about now I'm feeling stumped, stunned, and stupefied. Not only was that artery clogging butter chicken action literally to die for, but that bread was tasting simply amazing. I guess it's kind of hard to mess up a meal that's essentially made from cream, butter, and spices. But still, I must say, that is the best butter chicken I've had to date, baby cakes. 
Now, I did take myself a taste of that green chili partha on its own just to see what it was like. It did taste edible and incredible, but it's still much better with that butter chicken. I mean, that bread did have a nice green chili spice with a perfect level of chewiness and crunchiness to it. But you can always make a good food even better, so you best believe I put some more butter chicken on top. Now, just how exactly do they make this butter chicken? How the hell am I supposed to know? Word around the campfire is they marinate that chicken in some yogurt and spices over several hours. Then they make a rich gravy with cream, butter, garam masala, other spices, lemon, and all kinds of jazz. Basically, I don't know much about how they make this food. I just know about the end result, sweetie buns. And what I know is that this incredible heart disease inducing meal just caused me to achieve nirvana, moksha, inner solace, and enlightenment all at the same fucking time. I guess you could say it had a pretty big impact on my life, presumably a positive one. So next up, I thought I might as well try out a new type of bread. Here we got some kima naan, and in my personal opinion, it's looking pretty damn achahe. So I figured I'd take a look under the hood over here and get a more in-depth understanding of this kima naan. Seems to me like it's got some minced mutton meat and spices baked directly into it. Seems like a pretty buck wild flatbread to me, so I took myself a bite to see how it was on its own. And the exact picosecond that I took myself a bite, I could taste some meaty, greasy goodness. But truth be told, eating minced meat inside bread isn't quite enough. You gotta put some meat on top of that meat. So I frantically grabbed that heart disease inducing meat on meat delicacy and then I took myself a bite. And whoa baby, somehow, some way, that bite actually tasted a bit more rich than the first bread. It was also tasting a bit more salty and a tad more complex, what with those multiple bread layers and all. I thought eating all that rich butter chicken would fill me up pretty fast, but instead I was getting hungrier and hungrier. So I slapped some masala onions onto that naan, and then I put myself some lime on top as well. I guess you could say I was adding a little bit of zest to my life. Can you actually blame me, baby? And wow, just fucking wow, take a look at that bite. I think it ain't looking half bad. So I folded it up and couldn't help mire in that beauty. Then I animalistically took myself a bite and oh! Man, holy Hanuman. It's getting a tad messy over here and whoa, 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 I got a random piece of chicken flying off that bite. Nevertheless, despite that messiness, the onion and lime brought a much needed zestiness to that whole bite and I liked it a lot. In other words, nice fucking flavor combo right there. Next up, there was one more type of bread to try out, a little thing called misi roti. So as with the previous breads, I figured I'd take a taste on its own and whoa! Whoa, 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 baby, it's got a crunchy, whole grainy kind of flavor to it. I feel like I taste some spice seeds in there as well, and this bread's tasting real damn good. That bread was tasting so good that I actually couldn't stop myself from eating the whole piece. Not only did it have soul-soothing potential, but it also had life-improving potential. I guess what I'm trying to say in an indirect way is that right there was a nice piece of bread. I think that yellow misi roti bread was actually my favorite among all three. Now at this point, I was loving that butter chicken and bread situation, but it just wasn't quite spicy enough. So I figured I'd take this meal out with a bang and also diffuse some stereotypes while I was at it. I mean, I don't know what it is about India, but it seems like every place I go, people are surprised that I want spicy food. I don't exactly know why that is, could be because I'm a whitey, but the bottom line is we're diffusing some stereotypes now, baby. 
And after biting into those green chilies sandwiched between that butter chicken and bread, there was a momentary calm. Then after that, there was a serious spice explosion. Pretty fucking much, those mighty fine chilies cleared out my sinuses and I could have sworn they boosted my immune system. And it's important to note that by the end of that spice-packed bite, there were tears in my eye. But they weren't tears of sadness, baby. They were tears of motherfucking joy. So after clearing out all of that butter chicken and bread, I gotta say, I most definitely must rate this meal a 5 out of 5 Maharaja Daugs. After all, it was the butter chicken experience I had dreamed of, and it most definitely improved my life in unidentifiable ways. Now, to finish off this life-affirming meal, I figured I'd get myself a sweet motherfucking treat by the name of Fernie. Apparently, it's some kind of rice pudding or something, but I don't know the exact details. Whatever the case, it was looking pretty decent, so I took myself a slow, elegant, and graceful bite. And whoa, whoa, what the hell? What in the wide, wide world of sports is that? I don't have the most developed palate in the world, but it seems to me like this just tastes like custard with some pistachios in it. Maybe a little rice tossed into the mix as well. I mean, it's not bad, but it most definitely is not life-changing either. Sorry to say, but I'm gonna have to rate this dessert a 3 out of 5 Maharaja Daugs. Unfortunately, it was not the sweet motherfucking treat I had dreamed of, sweetie buns. So after all that was done, the maestro working in the place brought me out some mookwas. The mookwas are an after-meal, mouth-freshening snack, and I love them to bits. This one had coconut, large granules of sugar, fennel seeds, and sugar-coated anise seeds packed up. So I poured out some sugar-coated anise seeds onto my hands and topped it off with a little bit of coconut and a little bit of fennel seeds. It was looking like a pretty decent spice setup, so I tossed it down the hatch and it freshened my mouth in buck wild ways. Anyway, that about does it for this Indian food tour, but if you wanna see more, then feel free, baby. I got my previous episode, which is a Hydra Baddie food tour with a badass subscriber, and I got a whole playlist of other food tour videos for you to check out. I've got those links down in the description box. And as always, thanks for watching this video. Why don't you leave a comment? Let me know what you think.